to come on board. It's a nice boat, isn't it? It's called the Dixie Queen. But if you think that you are going to see Jerome Kern's great musical showboat, you're quite wrong, absolutely wrong. But if you think you are in New Orleans, you're also wrong. So we are right in the heart of Stockholm, one of the most beautiful cities of the world, especially during the summer. These days, I think Stockholm is even more beautiful than usual is because nowadays, these days, it's also swinging because it's a great jazz festival going on here in Stockholm, the Stockholm Jazz and Blues Festival. There are lots of jazz celebrities here at the festival, of course. Tonight, we have the honor of presenting one of the absolutely great. A legend in his own lifetime. A wonderful band leader, tremendous drummer. Welcome, Mr. Buddy Rich.
It's a great pleasure, of course, to have back in Sweden again, Mr. Pradovich. Very, very welcome. It's my pleasure, and it's a pleasure to be back in Sweden, really. Having a great time here. You, yeah, you have been here many times now. Many times, but I think this time, with the festival going on and the audience, have been really marvelous. I've had a great time. The concert tonight was exciting, and I look forward to playing here. It's wow. very great, great audience. It's also a fantastic orchestra you have. Oh, thank you. Uh, a lot of new guys, I've never seen them before, but they play like, well, I cannot uh, say it because it's this, this band has been with me now uh, almost two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the very young people, uh, most of them are college graduates of music schools. And uh, in a band like this, you learn a lot. Mm -hmm. And when they first join, uh, for instance, I have a young trumpet player, 19 years old. His name is Greg Gisbert. And I think for the future of jazz, he's a very important force. I have a very young trombone player by the name of Tom Garling, who is also going to have a very, very great future in jazz. Mm -hmm. And most of the people in my band, I think, will keep uh, the jazz music alive. Uh, they will uh, become stars in their own right, I'm sure. I'm very proud of them. Yes, that's good. And then you have old Mr. Marcus, of course. Well, old Mr. Marcus has been with me now 12 years. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to keep him with me until I understand what he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There aren't too many big bands around nowadays. Mm. Uh, in 30 years or so, when, when you say that, yes. now when I, I'm going to, to ease it down a bit and well, take it easy. But what's going to happen? I think the young musicians who are playing jazz today and who are making an inroad, who are creating new forms of jazz, new styles of jazz, I think they will be the future band leaders who will take over when guys like Woody Herman and Maynard Ferguson and myself when we finally decide that it's enough, I think that they will carry on the tradition. At least I hope so. And they, they have the ability to do it, I'm I hope sure. So too. Mm -hmm. And you have no plans at all to. to... My career is just starting. Oh, I have so... many years to try to do the right thing. <laughs> and as, as long as I continue to do uh, what I consider to be dignity in jazz, and as long as there's an audience who will come out to hear us, mm -hmm. I see no reason to retire. I have as much fun today playing as I had when I was 20 years old. And I think from the judging of the audiences that we've been having since we got here, that uh, there'll be many more returns to your country and many more returns to the various countries that we play throughout the world. And I, I'm very happy doing what I do. It keeps me young.